Hi again, everybody. Chris Tisdell here. Thank you for joining me again. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my videos on geometric constructions and geometry using a circle arc template and a straight edge. And the idea with the circle arc template is to replace the compass because compasses are difficult to use. Uh, they don't produce very accurate drawings and they can be used as weapons. So we, um, I worked on this um, circle arc template and in this presentation, I'm gonna show you how you can use it. Um, in particular, we're going to find the midpoint of a given line segment. Um, this is a very old problem. Um, so let me share my screen with you and we can have a look at what's going on. All right. Okay, so this is the circle arc template that I'm going to be talking about today. It's got a positionable center point and you can draw an arc of about 300 degrees and there's a straight edge right next to it. Now, this is part of a bigger tool called a Mathemat and there's lots of interesting shapes and markings on here, but these are the two that we will be working with today. So this is like going to be our compass and then we've got our straight edge. Now, even though there are markings on these things, they're, they're not necessary for the construction that I'm going to show you today. All right, so um, how to find the midpoint of a given line segment? Well, this is a little bit like a previous video that I've shown you where you were given a line segment AB and you wanted to form the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so here e is the midpoint and CD is um, perpendicular to AB. That's more than what we're going to do today. We're just going to find the point that is the midpoint of, um, of the given line segment. So let me draw a little picture here. So let's start with something like that. Okay, and let's label it A, B with the endpoints. And the challenge is to construct using only our circle arc template and straight edge, the midpoint of a, B. Okay, so we want to find a, a third point right in the middle. So the distance from here to the midpoint and here to the midpoint is equal. Okay, so that's what we're going to try to do. All right, so how do you do it? Well, I'm glad you asked. And um, we're going to start with some equilateral triangles at both ends. So let me take my um, circle arc template and I'm going to say, oh, I'll start over here. I'm going to construct an equilateral triangle that lies below AB. So part of the base will be um, sort of em um, emanating from AB, right? So in order to do that, I'll place the center at one of the endpoints and I will make an arc. And that arc is going to cut AB at this point here. So I get a new point, let's say um, C. And then I'm going to place the center at C and make another intersection with the arc that I just drew. So let's make a little one here. Okay, so that's a new point, say um, D. All right. So what I've actually got there is an equilateral triangle ADC. Okay. So I'll, I'll just draw that in. I don't really need to draw it in for the construction, but I, it, it'll be helpful for the 
justification a bit later. All right, well, um, how is this helping us find the midpoint? Well, let's do exactly the same construction, but so the equilateral triangle lies above the line segment AB. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the steps. I will place the center of the circle arc at B, and I will draw another arc so that it intersects. So let's call that new point, um, what are we up to, E? Right, and then I'll just repeat the process. So you put the center at this new point E and draw a little arc up here. So let's call that um, F. Okay, and I'll even complete these line segments. There we go. All right. So what we're going to do now is join D with F, okay? And actually that's the last part of the construction because that's going to cut the line AB and it's gonna cut it into two equal pieces. So I've got a new point there. Let's call it um, G. And the claim is that AG equals BG. So the length of that line segment equals the length of that line segment. So that's the basic construction. Um, what about some justification? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, the way that I'm going to do this is using congruent triangles, okay, and the basic tests for congruent triangles. So let me share again, and uh, we can look at some justification. All right, so the first thing is we've got an equilateral triangle here because these are all radii. And because we've used the same radii for every circle, these radii have got to be equal, okay? So the first thing I would, I would say is that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Why? Because of the side, side, side rule, okay? Um, so let me, I guess I can keep going with purple. So by side, 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 angle A, uh, sorry, triangle ADC, is congruent to triangle BFE. And this is the notation I'll use. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that the corresponding angles are equal in the triangle, right? So we know that this angle must be equal to this angle. All right, so what are we trying to do here? We're trying to show that this length equals this length. And you can see that there's a bigger triangle here and a bigger triangle here. Now, if we look closely, you'll see that these two angles here are a pair of opposite angles, right? So they need to be equal. They're, they're equal, right? We know that. So if we look at the bigger triangle, we've got two corresponding angle, angles that are equal and a corresponding side that are equal. So by the angle, angle um, side rule, we know that say that the um, triangle GAD is congruent to GBF, okay? So that would be the, the final step. So by angle, angle, side, we know that triangle 
GAD is congruent to triangle GBF. Oops. So what do we know? We know that the corresponding sides and angles are equal. This side corresponds to this side. So we would conclude that these two lengths are equal and hence G must be the midpoint of AB. Okay, so you can see we use similar triangles there twice. And um, there's probably lots of different ways to justify this. And the, the difference between this construction and the one that I've shown you before is that this actually is perpendicular and this is not necessarily perpendicular. But I find this really interesting construction because if you say draw another couple of line segments in here, you can see really what's going on now. ADBF is a parallelogram and the original line segment AB is one of the diagonal line segments, one of the diagonals, okay? So if this is the other one, then we know that they, they're going to be um, bisected. So pretty cool, right? Um, this is a construction that I don't think I've seen it in Euclid's elements, but um, you see it in other places. And, and you de it's definitely the kind of problem that you would see in high school geometry. So let me know what you think. Um, love to hear your stories about compasses or how you do geometry. Join me again. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.